Hey everyone, welcome to Primal Reef and Acrylics. Today's topic, I'm going to be talking about the benefits of having a wave maker in your aquarium. Uh, some of the topics I'm going to be covering is the benefits of having good water flow, some of the problems you have with low water movement or low flow, um, and another topic is going to be the difference in water movements and water flow. Starting off with uh, water flow, um, this type of flow is pretty much a single power head that is directionally faced in any direction but in a linear line. So that's pretty much a straight line that you have. Um, so yeah, that's uh, you can recreate that by having one or two or more power heads that are angling in one direction. So for example in my aquarium now, on my left hand side, I'm sorry the reflection is kind of bad because the sun's out. But I have a WP40 which is on a linear flow. That's a one way direction. So you see the water movements by the surface. It's one way all the time. If you have this type of flow, there's going to be issues in your tank because this type of flow, every single time you feed and every single time there's fish waste, it's going to settle in certain spots in my tank where there's dead flow, meaning there's zero flow. Um, this type of flow is pretty much, it's beneficial if you have multiple power heads, meaning more than two or three, because you want to have a constant random flow. So for guys who don't want a wave maker and you have a single power head that's facing one direction, please go ahead and buy more power heads depending on your budget because you want to have as you, you, end of the day, you don't want any detritus building up in your tank. Okay? Um, so that's water flow, a one way directional flow, just like the ocean's current. That's a one way directional flow. The second is pretty much water movement. Um, this is a back and forth surge, like the movement in the water, um, that creates when passed over a reefed aquarium. Uh, a reef, sorry, in the ocean. Um, this type of flow is pretty much best to use when creating the typical conditions found in the depths of the ocean of less than 40 feet. Okay, so I hope you guys got that. When in an ocean you have different depths, different, different depths will have different types of flow. The reason why nature has created a certain type of flow in certain type of depths, it benefits certain type of corals. So you won't find LPS corals in a hundred foot of depth water because the temperature is not the same, the flow is different, it's not going to get certain type of nutrition and, and it's not going to grow, period. That's why nature has replicated to have certain type of flows in certain depths of the ocean. So meaning the first 40 feet has what's called a wave uh, movement, a water movement. So water movement is a back and forth surge created. Uh, most corals pretty much do best in turbulent water. So right now, we in my aquarium, we have a linear flow. So in a linear flow, if you look at it, there's not much involved, just a regular flow. So in the ocean, in the first 40 feet, this is what you're going to have. You're going to start having a wave motion, okay? So looking at my water surface now, you see that it's causing a wave, a very slight wave. Now what's good about having a wave maker, especially a Vortec MP40, which is a more of a reliable, a Vortec and a um, Ecotec Marine, which is which creates a Vortec, and then you have the Tunzi pumps, which both have different types of wave maker. Again, do your research and find out what's what benefits you. What what's more reliable? Um, right now, what I have is a WP40, which is like a Chinese version. Um, it is much cheaper. It's roughly about a hundred bucks. Um, plus shipping depending where you are in the world, but I wanted to test this aquarium pump out because of different reasons uh, again one is budget for me um, However end of the day what I'm trying to say is this is more of a trial error test I will be purchasing a Vortec mp10 or 40 um, What one of the disadvantages of having this pump now which I noticed in the last couple of days is you can't control the intensity of the pump no matter what setting you are on. It has preset settings. So right now this pump, the way it shoots out the wave, 
I'll be very honest, it's a little too powerful for this four foot tank. You really have to position certain corals all over the place. I think with this pump, if you have an SPS dominated tank, it would do wonderful because SPS corals need strong flow. However, with LPS, I gotta put that, if you look at my top tank, uh, top left hand side, that LPS, the frog spawn, it is a pretty big frog spawn. It goes 12 inches in, in length and 12 inches high. But as you can see, with the waves that I have in the aquarium, it's not doing too well. I'm going to change the wave motion on my tank now. Uh, this is, uh, you, you'll see the wave uh, that's going to come in very soon. So again, to have benefits of a wave maker, you want to get rid of all the detritus in your tank. That's one of the main, main reasons. Um, some of the problems that you can have that of not having a wave maker is pretty much excessive nitrates and phosphates that allow detritus to build up in dead spots. Okay, so it's very important not to, very important to have a wave maker in a reef tank. Um, one of the second thing is not having a proper or decent wave is you have a slow growth for corals. Um, it's pretty much ineffective or reduced biological filter in from live rocks. So when you have a one-way directional flow, you're gonna have a lot of detritus built up in certain spots. For me now, I can select throughout the day if I'm home or when I do come back from work, I select different type of flow. So one day I'll have this type of flow in my tank right here, whereas um, the, the, the ends go in and out, um, I can select different flows. So I know when I feed my system, one week, I can have this flow right here. Second week, I'll, I'll try something else. It's a little bit different. So, end of the day, I don't have any detritus built up anywhere. For the last two months, I didn't have a wave maker in my tank. So, when I put this pump in, I was really shocked to see how much detritus was built up. Now, I have a pan world pump that has a return pump with two lock heads or lock lines that are coming out. There's not that much flow to it, which is understandable. Um, but what I did have was I had two hydrocorrelia pumps. Um, they were just under, I believe, 750 gallons per hour. So they were they were creating very decent flow in my aquarium. But even so, I thought that was enough. But end of the day, when I put this pump in and I seen all the detritus that came out, I was really shocked to see that. Um, some of the benefits of having a wave maker is some of you will see if you will have a small layer of protein that builds up at the top surface of the aquarium. Even if you have a, an overflow that drains that surface skimming out, there are still very tiny, tiny layers of protein that, that in certain spots when you have a linear flow of a power head, the turbulence of the water surface allows that type of um, the, the protein to remain in certain spots. With a power head that causes flow now, like this what you see in my aquarium, is very different. Uh, this allows a lot of, lot of um, um, exchange of water movements. Um, so it allows the oxygen of the atmosphere to hit the water surface and allows the water to absorb that. So that's very beneficial for your fish. The second main thing is you want to have water movement so the fishes have a very good workout. It, um, a better workout means the fishes get hungry more. And when they get hungry more, they're going to eat more. Which is okay because if you have now a sick fish and he's being working out back and forth swimming in the turbulent water, he's going to eat more. So you can now dose the garlic food in anything you have, whether it be nori seaweed, Mycie shrimp, you can have plankton, you can have anything. But if you're dosing garlic into your food and that fish is hungry, he's going to eat that garlicky food and end of the day, garlic food is very good for the fish's immune system. It causes less, um, less sickness to fishes and this way you're less likely to get ick in your, in your aquarium. Now in my tank I've been having a little bit of a problem recently. Um, I put in a, uh, a blue tang 
and he came out with ick and I don't know I tried everything possible good thing is he's eating so you can see that blue tang right there uh, that guy is roughly about six inches yeah, um, he's doing great he does like the wave uh, sometimes he swims around back and forth against the wave and with the currents he is eating which is a good thing about it because the wave is probably making him hungry but because of a big fish in the aquarium and the amount of ick that he had um, sad to say my Tomney Tang died and my my two and a half inch uh, blue throat female trigger uh, he's been sick and he's not doing too too well if you look at the bottom right hand side that trigger is he's locked into to the rocks there uh, when I do put food in he is eating which is a good thing um, but uh, that's just a completely different topic by itself so it's very important to get a wave maker guys um, again watch your budget see what's reasonable for you end of the day I would still stick towards a Vortec MP40 or MP10 just for the reason of controlling the power of the pump no matter what pump setting you have it's very important to select it because now with this pump that I have I can't go ahead and select the intensity of this uh, MP, MP, uh, WP40 alright so there's many benefits I will suggest everybody and highly recommend it to buy a wave maker for your tank it will you will see the results period okay if you guys have any any more questions please uh, let me know subscribe any comments post them below and if you guys have any advices please help me out help everybody else out and thank you very much for watching stay tuned for future videos of uh, primal reef and acrylics thank you guys